Hey guys, Andrew Shrout here on the sideboard. I'm sitting with Dave Thomas. How's it going, Dave? How's it going, Andrew? I'm pretty good. So you are uh, basically the OG of Dredge, as it were. M many people have referred to me as that, so I guess we can go with it. Yeah. Uh, you you top an invitational with mm -hmm. Dredge. You top two opens with Dredge. Correct. Uh, it's like that you've been playing for what four five years now. Actually, a I've, while. Been, I've been playing uh, playing it since the mechanic has been printed. I played it throughout standard, okay. extended. Uh, I tried in uh, I tried in modern, but that doesn't work. <laughs> But you but still now, tried, of yeah. course. <laughs> but now I'm the legacy. So. Okay. So, Dredge, it's not a new deck necessarily, no, but... it's been around uh, forever. Yeah, but anytime you come out with it, I want to get a chance to sit down and, and okay. see what, what your most recent take is on the archetype. So, before we get into that, though, getting into the kind of the details, just really broadly, what is it about Dredge and Legacy that, like, appeals to you? Why, why is this the deck that you play? Uh, one of the most unfair things you can do in Magic is uh, gain card, uh, card advantage and use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's for, uh, hence card advantage. But uh, the be often the best resource in the game has been the graveyard. Sure. Because it's the fastest way to get access to multiple cards and then you know, use those cards er over and over. Well, I can do that. Well, Golgari Grave Troll allows me to draw six cards a turn instead right. of one. So why? Wh there's nothing I want to do more than draw massive amounts of cards. <laughs> so okay. So basically, rather than getting the, the kind of the virtual three for one by brainstorming back two bad ones, you get the virtual six for one. It's just so every time you dredge, you know, and flip six cards. Those are six cards that you have access to that you can play yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. As it's, long as you fill your deck with cards that do things from the graveyard. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I mean, uh, I I always like doing unfair things, and, and when it's really really unfair like this, right. it, it makes it more more fun. That is, yeah, I I, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> when, when when something is broken, I I want to abuse it. And Dredd certainly does abuse it. Now, you, uh, your, your list that you're playing today is not so far removed from the, the list we've seen before, the Faithless Looting yeah. versions with Lion's Eye Diamond. There is one uh, very fresh edition. This is something that we have not seen before, or at least I haven't seen. You have four main deck Street Wraith in your deck. Yes, uh, there's there's two basic forms of the Dredge deck uh, mm -hmm. that I've come up with, uh, or that people have helped me uh, come up with, too. It's this one with uh, Street Wraith, and, uh, and then the one with... The Flame can Zealot, uh, right. kill you, same turn combo. Uh, usually not all four acreage, usually a minimum uh, number, like th uh, two or three, mm -hmm. and then some other, because they don't have enough black creatures. Right. Uh, the thing I like, one of the big things about Street Wraith is how good it is against Deathrite Shaman. Sure. Because on the draw, you can put a Dredger in your graveyard with a Putrid Imp or a Careful Study, and then when they target it with the Deathrite Shaman, you can cycle it in response. Okay. Uh, playing four Street Wraith also allows you to max out an acreage because you have plenty of black creatures. To all remember. right. So right. it's it's very strong. So basically, just uh, from the time that Death Ride was has been printed and uh, a really prevalent part of Legacy, you've been looking for a, an instant speed. Actually, it was Jerry Jerry Thompson uh, who first uh, told uh, told me about this a couple. It's like a year and a half ago, yeah. maybe. And then uh, I I started working on on what I thought was correct op or the optimal uh, configuration for the deck with Street Race. Okay. Since then. All right, so so Street Wraith came about because of I guess because of Death Race. Oh, it's definitely right. because of Death Race. Uh, and then once you knew that you wanted for Street Wraith, you kind of started tinkering with the rest of the deck exactly. to, to match that. You mentioned uh, Dread Return. Uh, traditionally, uh, people have once they filled up their graveyard, they have used Dread Return to return a Flame Kinzella, give all their zombie tokens haste, yeah. and attack for the win. Uh, when Gristlebrand was printed, I know I played the deck for a while with mm -hmm. Gristlebrand as a way to just like turbo yeah. dredge through your deck and the, and the Flame Gonzella. Uh, that was a bit much. That was maybe maybe a little bit of a, a crutch or something, but uh, it, it was fun when it worked. But uh, in this case, you are you've trimmed all of that. You have one dread return, uh, and, and that's basically just for value, I it's, suppose. It, it is value. Sometimes you need an additional sack outlet other than Cabal Therapies, mm -hmm. uh, and also some on turn one when you don't hit your bridges. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you hit the uh, three Narcomeavers with a Dread Return, maybe one bridge, yeah. and you can just put a 13-13 Grave Troll in play, and they will die to it. Sure. Yeah, so, so you don't have a dedicated win condition, no, you know, no. No, no card that is only there to, to dread just return up and win with. It, it also but. it cleans up the mulligans of the deck a little uh -huh. bit because you have less dead 7-6 card hands because the deck's such more, uh, much more focused right. now without all the reanimation targets. Okay. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you have all four Icarids. Uh, there were a lot of lists previously that only had three. They had the fourth mm -hmm. on the board sometimes. Uh, and, of course, four, four Street Wraiths, more black cards to, yeah. to feed it. So you're just like a, a much more consistent... Uh, grind out fair decks. Yes, yes. It's, it's uh, the, the reason uh, I, I've split it up into two versions is because uh, you, the combo version is really good against other combo decks. Yeah. When, when the deck, when the meta game, legacy meta game is fast, you want to be as fast as possible. Yeah. But when it's a bunch of fair like Delver or 
uh, bu like Bug Delver, American Delver decks, and metagames are a lot slower, there's mm -hmm. less combo around, uh, the grindier deck is, is where I want to be because it's much more consistent. Like, game one, uh, most decks are unprepared for uh, for this matchup. Just because it's so abysmal, they're not going to sacrifice main deck slots right. to try and get you. Okay. So, the only other change in the main deck, and this is this is a very subtle change. Yeah. Actually, I, I didn't notice it. You were the one that said, this is a, this is the other thing I've done. You might want to talk about this. I'm like, uh, most people wouldn't catch this. You are down to 12 lands. Yeah. And most, uh, most the stock dredge list, I guess, plays uh, 13. Yeah. Or, or maybe sometimes even 14. 14, yeah. But you have cut a Cephalid Coliseum. This is kind of a card that... It's kind of one of the sacred cows of dredge. This so, is not a card that many dredge players play, would ever consider playing fewer than four of. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I've also cut... I don't play four careful studies anymore. Mm -hmm. I've cut it down to two. Faithless looting is just superior in every way right. for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but by cutting careful studies, there's only four blue cards I need to cast uh, in the main deck. Two breakthroughs and two careful studies. Yeah. Uh, that means uh, double cephalic Coliseum hands are really bad in lots of situations because you can't cast the rest of your spells. Mm -hmm. So cephalic Coliseum acts as another breakthrough or careful, uh, careful study uh, to go turbo. Right. Well, since you're not using it to make mana, why not just have another spell? Right. Uh, in that in that spot. Okay. So, and so it's that's that's why I shaved the land. It was basically trimmed to make room for more street race. Exactly. Then, I guess. It, that's actually what it ended up happening. Okay. Uh, I, th I think when I when I was trying to make room for the it was either the fourth acre or the fourth street. It's the fourth something, but something sure. needed to go. All right, that's fair. Okay. Uh, well, we've talked about the main deck. I want to talk about the sideboard. There's nothing new necessarily no. in the sideboard, but uh, Dredge is a deck that has a, a reputation. Mm -hmm. It has a, a reputation for being incredibly powerful in game ones, but not necessarily playing catch up after board because there are a lot of very powerful anti graveyard sideboard cards. That's correct. So. Uh, I'm, always, I'm really interested to like talk to someone who's played the deck a lot, uh, because it's not always obvious uh, in a format like Legacy, where people can play Artifact Hate, like mm -hmm. Graph Digger's Cage, Relic of Progenitus. They can play a any deck can play Surgical Extraction just by paying two life. So h how do you know what hate cards to play around, and kind of like how do you approach sideboarding? With this uh, in general, uh, specific archetypes ha go to their niche of uh, sideboard cards. Very, very uh, a little. Every now and then they kind of drift off and you know, do their own thing yeah. but a lot of people just stick with the cards because they're there for a reason yeah. they're the best they're the most optimal version of hate okay uh, available to that deck so like white decks have rest in peace uh, non-white decks have gra graph diggers cage All right. but when like graveyard decks disappear the graph diggers cage changes to something else like surgical extraction because it becomes more functional in other matches uh, right okay uh, not just not just hosing graveyard uh, graveyard based decks so when uh, it's really important to look at the metagame and know what hate is floating around okay, because that's that's really important to how you sideboard. Okay. Uh, I I personally pay attention to how many cards people sideboard in. Right. Uh, if if they don't shuffle their entire board, because right, that sure. that actually changes how I sideboard. Uh, that makes sense. If you board in one or two cards, I'm probably not likely to change my list at all. Maybe Fair enough. maybe uh, in certain matchups I may want the, the dread return targets because they are on my board. Yeah, we'll get, uh, I'll kind of go over that too and ask you why why those are mm -hmm. there and when you use them. But uh, in, in general, it's just you stick to the archetypes, and when something uh, something goes awry, if you won game one, you just adjust for it in game three. Okay. And it, it, it works out a fair amount of the time. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you, you, have a, you have one Dread Return in your board to go with the one in your main, so you can go up to two. And then you do have some big, beefy creatures. You have mm -hmm. one Ashen Rider, one Iona, Shield of Amiria, and one Elish Norn, Grand mm -hmm. Cenobite. Uh, those are basically just hate cards in the right matchups, I suppose? Yeah, like, yeah they're, you, they're silver bullets uh, like uh, you, against other combo decks, all, mm -hmm. all three of these. I mean, the Iona has more applications than the others against fair decks because mm -hmm. they're like a lot of the Delver decks have tr uh, t uh, impossible time getting Iona without a Caracas. Okay. Uh, but Elish Norns for uh, all the tribal decks because it is there are lots of situations uh, where tribal decks can kill their own creatures and get rid of all of your bridges. Right. And Elish Norn, in general, uh, kills everything. Sure. Of theirs, so it not only does it kill everything of theirs, it pumps your like Icarage, yeah. your Future Nymphs, and Archimedes. You, you, you don't have Bridge from Below anymore, but you don't need it because they don't have a board and can't exactly. Have one. Um, I have an Ashen Rider. Uh, it's really good against. It's a utility creature. I used to have Angel of Despair. Ashen Rider strictly better. Removes the permanent and it does yeah. something when it leaves uh, when it uh, dies. Sure, but uh, it's it's for uh, it's it it comes in when there are things like in Staring Bridge, right. Like, just, uh, just single, just, like unanswerable type permanents. Exactly. Okay. It's just another another way I can get it, especially when I've gone all in and I have no hand. I gotcha. can't rely on a nature's claim to kill 
Okay. Those things. All right. So we are. We just finished round four. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That's correct. Right. And you are you started four zero. Mm-hmm. Not it's a good bad. Good start. Good yeah. start. Can't complain about that. Never. All right. How's how's your tournament been so far? What have you played against? Uh, in round one, my opponent actually didn't show up. So oh. that's always that's easy, always a plus. easy game. Okay. Uh, in round two, I played against Death and Taxes, and that that is a very favorable matchup for Dredge, especially when we're on, uh, the die roll is won uh, by, uh, sure. by the Dredge player. Okay. Because there's literally nothing the Death and Taxes player can do ex- other than play a Thalia uh, in game one that stops you from doing it. Okay. Fair. And then games two and three, it's usually just pray for rest and peace for them right. and put in an appropriate clock. Sure. So sometimes, we, sometimes they have like one Enlightened Tutor to exactly. replace their. Usually, because they have the Enlightened Tutor, they only have one rest and peace, for example. Yeah. So maybe they have it, but it's unlikely that they do. Exactly. Sure. So that, that's a pretty favorable matchup. I, uh, I, I always enjoy playing that matchup. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next uh, round I played against Blue White Stoneblade. Uh, it's that's a tougher matchup because it's like death and taxes. Uh, they they have an ample clock with the rest of peace, but they have counter spells. Mm-hmm. But uh, you just I just did uh, did the same board plan. Mm-hmm. Just beat rest in peace and you beat him as normal. And then this last round I had it on my uh, feature match. Sure. I, yeah, we had it against, on camera uh, against Bug Delver. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love once again with, as with most matches I love my game one matches sure. against yeah, yeah, that's most of the field uh, but that works for Bug Delver specifically Lax and Hate a lot of people have gotten really relaxed with the uh, I'm blanking Death Rite Shaman right. on Graveyard Hate because they've kind of crutched on him to do the Graveyard yeah, Hating job they think they already have Graveyard Hate main so they don't need any more precise Graveyard Hate before exactly so it, 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 it makes the sideboard of games a, a little bit easier and that's and that's what happened uh, happened for me. He he had a surgical extraction. He surgical extracted my Narcomevus, but I still had the Icarids. Mm-hmm. And Deathrite Shaman just wasn't able to keep up when I once I dumped my library in my graveyard. Nice. All right. So so we are we're not quite halfway through the tournament. Nope. We're, yeah. But we're, more. we're we're getting there, and you certainly come out to a good start. I'll mm-hmm. be rooting for you. Thank you. Thanks for sitting down with me, man. Stick around. We've got plenty more coverage coming of the Legacy Open here in Dallas.